Greetings. My name is Candace Curran. I'd like to thank L.D. Green and NCTV for inviting me to do the Valley Poets Collection. I'm pretty thrilled because I've seen all the great poets that have come before me, and I feel really honored. Thank you. Writing poetry, in my mind, is a taming or capture of thoughts, feelings, monsters, experiences made visceral. A documentary, small paintings, each poem, a mind melding. For me, it's all about the word and image connection, the unexpected presentation of something deeply personal and universal at the same time, the work or flow of a Zen play of opposites. I will be reading from publications from Haley's Press and Athol with three poems, kind of a show and tell from ten years of presentations of Interface, a collaboration of word and image, where twenty or more artists and writers married to present an installation, a reading, and a talk of collaborative process made possible by Marcia Gagliardi of Haley's Press and Athol and Robert Mayer, photographer and really great guy. The first poem is called Jigsaw, and it is from Playing in Rex, from the, a painting by Richard Baldwin, who very recently in, passed away and is terribly missed. Jigsaw. I'm beginning to wonder what you didn't take, what you didn't fake. I know you left a whiskey burn and false impressions in an easy chair. You are a malingerer in crazy jigsaw spaces, in empty bullet places. You left a dangerous taste in a mouth heartburned. The next poem is Landlord with photography by Robert Mayer of Athol from playing in Rex. Landlord, he told her he'd give her favors, freebies, if she gave him some sweetness. And knowing what she couldn't afford, she let him pull her dignity down like a shade to the floor. third poem is a haiku called Spring Dance of the Sugar Maple, photography by Les Campbell of Belchertown, the Quabbin photographer, calligraphy by Shelley Sanders, who rendered it to read both ways. Fairy tale ladies in yellow gowns and slippers dance from golden strings. Up and down they fly, sweeping bottom, reaching sky, delicate wind chimes. The king's bold daughters dance through the night, enchanted, wearing out their shoes. Um, let's see. I'm going to read from Bone Cages, an anthology with Doug Anderson, Jim Beshta, Mara Bright, and John Hodgson, with illustrations by Abigail Rohrer. The poem is titled, Holding. You always came without warning, with a built-in disclaimer, with no guarantees. Afterwards, your warm-blooded gifts slacken, and you play yourself out, lay yourself out, a slab cradle, a flat line. You are a stone host. It's love's soft underbelly that pricks, won't let me leave you alone. Curling itself into a question, it stabs with a split tongue. I become the black-hearted offender, trying to pin you to your after lies. You stay the same, and nothing sticks. Whatever's broken can't be fixed. I know the path to your good graces and steal my way back in. I slip and break my skin. Evening comes, dropping a clean slate, but it doesn't break through. 
your arms stay crossed against us, and you sleep without dreams, a dead man in the hollow of my wing. Bone Cradle Making ready for release, arms open and you break like the ocean, crashing, disappearing, the way a spirit vanishes from the body shell. Where does it go? If tears would bring you back, there could be no death. If weeping fill the ocean, we would swim in its hollow womb. Making ready for release, I give it the knees, rising from heart's bloody bath, a believer in your lost cause. Where do you put an ocean? Treasure and debris wash themselves together, polished, worn smooth and soft as milk. Love tumbles, turns up flawless, precious as a lost child, cradled ageless in the bone. Playing in Rex was published in 2011. The first poem is Pin It to the Headboard. I pull on your fantasy so hard it comes off in my sign language hands. A snake skin shining like spider silk in the day bed. You lift a mason jar and bite the head off a bitter beer so carefree. I wonder where it flees. Your pop-up heart when the high-tension wires are cut. When you go down like the sun spilling whiskey and leave easy my mad woman to pick up threads, true or not, to weave into tall tales spinning, story after story talking a jag that keeps me up all night wrapped like a horsefly. My mad woman, no, I want to know, where do you keep your heart? One man's ceiling Every night, downstairs, she hears his brass bed slapping, headboard clapping, knocking her off her comfort zone, unsettling her clothing until she comes undone, broken like the landlord, like the clang-bang pipes, everything fixed to break, about all she can take. She pounds fists on his ceiling, pitches a fit of shoes across a tilting floor. Trigger happy. The Sayonara poem was loaded. Cold steel against my cheek, a bolt, a jolt, a kick in the teeth. Bang, click, release. Chambers empty, but you come back. Like the movie dead, a new release of reruns. With me in the part of the bleeding heart, the trigger happy bleeding heart. Memory made better in marted prose. But the bottom line is a Russian roulette of the goodbye sign and steel. Cold steel against my channel changing. Same thing playing. No sayonara of relief. Cemetery workers rest their shovels. She releases a shower song from the sill of an open window to the beat of a hot water heater, in the heat of love snagged in the limbs, a mongrel language part Wampanoag, foxglove, fisher cat, the lost epic a dirge, a simple rusty hinge unleashed, bursting the wings of wood pigeons, freezing a grave digger's shovel halfway to his mouth. The next poem is called Response for W. Wordsmithy, you are no slouchy loser. You are the man that can hold a woman like me in the deep bowl of his body, make it rise and sing. 
hold me in some dumb fucking goodness of bear paw and sapling so that I want to build a tree house there, garden and spar, laugh with you. Coy dogs under the hunter's tarnished moon, green with envy at we to be lovers in a firm purchase, bearing witness to scarecrow heart bones thumping, tin-eared but sincere, and oh so tender to that newly made, that new old, that bright bird song. This poem is called Last Fireman's Ball, Enfield, Massachusetts, April 27th, 1938. And it was, it's a poem about um, the last of the wiping out of four towns to um, create the Quabbin Reservoir. It's a saying goodbye poem. The building swayed, frail as a paper sack and laughter and tears bumped elbows like the neighbors they are. And when reunion took turns, handkerchief eyes shook hands, hello and goodbye in the hollows of arms, in the halo of headlights and stars. Everyone tender, everyone lovers tonight. I'm into um, the word and image. I did an, uh, an automotive poetry event, and this, came, this poem came from that. Um, it was written on a parts and labor bill. It's called Downshift. I bring my attention back to the road that drive the mechanics of steel, and away from your ghost riding shotgun, your face remembered into the rear view, where did you climb on? Memory clicks in and out on the radio dial, chambers fill with trick lyric until I'm off on a tangent, the breakdown, a ditch somewhere going nowhere with you. I bring myself back. The ride, the road, the feel of the wheel, waylaid plans for a getaway. At the base of my neck, your touch slow at the curve drops like a serpent. I drive a thin ribbon of road, soft bones and velvet throat, where sun distills butter rum and you don't follow where I crash dummy into oncoming darkness, knocking like a lover at her yawn and swallow. I think about peaches because I hear you below moaning like bear, like central heating, noises of discontent and misfirings, but don't worry. I'm not going to woo you with my fast talk and three Merlots and new boldness. Fact remains that you want me and you don't want me. Just a foot up and some kind of relief I can't offer because you won't take any solace or springtime, but what a tease is springtime, huh? Your gathered sadness bigger than the moon is heavy, can't be masked with sunglasses can't be beat with this black and blues blaring sanding floorboards smooth as scotch. Oh, sweet man and full moon combo, I smell the memory of you soft as peach, but I can't root that stone. The first one has been published in Meat for Tea magazine. One second prize in the Brattleboro Writing Contest. It's called Turnaround. Lightning lit a cigarette, launched a rickety handrail that frazzled and frayed and swung in the air like a broken trapeze. She tossed the match, scattering potluck buckshot, crack shots posting search and rescue, the sky a billboard of near misses. We were sulking in the car, 
a spat, niching scars, scoring heavy on the metal, a black keys only choreography. I was sitting night shift Shiva, no more chit chat, no more happy horseshit. A lightning rod, testing loss with a tuned fork, her fine fur standing. Rattling thunder, not to be out undone. The iron cast a cartoon frying pan in the face, and well, didn't we deserve it? A wake-up call to our lucky stars all tipsy-turvy in their spun-glass constellation, hanging by guardrails, wires loose, ready to let go when... Lightning stubbed her cigarette, staggered off to bed. She said she'd had enough, and now, well, hell, hadn't we all? A complex root system. His bully wrist twists banned her with strawberry bracelets and words that strip, thin skin like birch, but still he is expecting courtesy and dinner. On waking, he remembers sorry and dangles sloppy grins like runny eggs with fish hooks baited, sweet meats and desire for an uncomplicated forgiveness. If she isn't foolish about it, if she didn't always have to question and test. He tries to erase last night's tears cut diamonds from yesterday's sky. Can't she see the effort? Find it in her? She's a dreamer, he says, a spoiled brat. She is dreaming right now. A knife to her cinched tongue, tied and bound, unraveling tangled roots that would recover her sweet dreams and voice box, the sound of her good name, the keys to the car. A release. In the woods behind the house, high, thin whistles. Zorro, wax wings, zigzag in pursuit of flying objects. You took my joy, I want it back. Inside a man set free a jailbird's song. Lucinda carried it across the river's radio waves. You took my joy, I want it back. He was mocking her at first, but picking up speed it became a bloodhound's mantra. I want it back. I want it back. He placed her wrists behind his neck, his hands around her thin wishbone. In the woods behind the house, a troubadour mockingbird sang everybody's song. A pair of wax wings took turns, passing a berry back and forth before she finally swallowed his gift. I have a few black dog almost rescued poems. I'm hoping to uh, maybe do a children's um, book about this black dog. Black dog is a black dog is a midnight train, a moonless night, a barely rescued mostly lab retrieving nothing but your own calamity heart. To walk this dog, you better know how to water ski tarmac. To lean way back cuz nothing gonna hold this motorboat back. But trash cans at the curb a balloon bobbing birthday. The yellow dog sun, just an everyday sun, falling head first out of the blue, the cornflower blue. Black dog is a black dog is a tumbleweed train, a moonless night, a close to rescue, retrieving nothing but your own calamity heart. Sadie is a Sadie is a ragtag, a wagtailed dog, say it three times fast. I say, slow it down, get back home, lassie, I say it three times fast. Three times, nine times, 
Long as it rhymes times, long as I last, I say it. Sadie is a ragtag, a wagtailed dog. Now you say it three times fast. Sadie is a runaway, a little bunny runaway, and I can't trust you don't trust me anyway. If only she gave me half a chance, I'd give her a second chance. Hundred million extra chance. She's a waggly, taily dog, a tail between the legs dog. A lay down like a frog dog, a last chance dag, a ragtag, wagtail dag. Now you say it, raggedy, waggedy, raggedy tag, Sadie's a ragtag dog. Loving on her. When Mr. Sets to pet her, sweet talk and melody, she becomes all pink tongue and butter. When Mr. Sets to brag on her, she goes belly up, such a good feller, good feller. She wants to kiss him. If he would let her, if she had arms, she would hug him silly. But a helpless pup when he rubs her belly, when Mr. sets to pet her all, sweet talk and melody. Early morning dog walking. In the early a.m. at the end of my leash, I'm asking, what am I doing out here? And then pink, the pink inside seashells, languidly throws itself over the beautiful, long stretch of thigh, the breakfast bowl of the hilltop, and I am lost in it, have fallen in, until dog bojangles her collar trinkets to wake me again to, hello, new world. Late night, dog walking. Cross the metal bridge above the deer field in dim light, we are remade in tinker toy construction. A George Alt retrospective, with no one there to give an honest appraisal. This poor turtle is uh, it's made by my friend Linda Lindgren, and it's part of the performance piece that I'm doing. Uh, the Iroquois legend is that for Turtle Island, even when there was nothing on Earth, up above the sky there was a place called Sky World, and Sky Woman lived in the Sky World, and one day she fell through a hole in the Sky World and was brought down to rest on the back of a giant snapping turtle. Then a muskrat brought up some mud from the bottom of the water, and Sky Woman made it grow and grow. She grew an island that we call North America, but the Iroquois called it Turtle Island. And um, this is an apocalyptic turtle with the world on its back, and hopefully our world is not going to look like that. Or the poor turtles. Two heads, too many feet. I want to live somewhere. I want to live somewhere upwind of it, upstream and nowhere near it, where the bees make the honey and the artists make the money, where it's safe and sound to drink and dine and runaway vines make sweet valley wine, where it's lush and green and you could feel alive in it. Not in a topography of lost geography, where moose bones tick a richter where stickleback sauna and kingfisher burrows in a tritium grave. Not where everyday men are snowmen, or you could burn, running like a fool, dancing naked in the rain. No. I want to live somewhere upwind, upstream, nowhere near it, where the farmers make the money and the cow's milk is honey, where it's safe and sound to drink and dine, and runabout vines make sweet valley wine, where it's lush and green, and you can feel alive in it, upwind, upstream, somewhere I could live without it. We could live just fine without it. I want to live somewhere, somewhere we can live. Thank you so much.
Currently, my energies have been put into a performance group called Exploded View. We are six women that, have, that are making art and poetry with installation and pretty much poetry performance. Our next event is Saturday, June 10th at 4 p.m. on the Glacial Potholes Observation Deck in Shelburne Falls. It's sponsored by the Greater Shelburne Falls Area Business Association and the Art Garden, funded by Hatch and the Massachusetts Cultural Council. The story behind this piece is that um, Dick's friend, his wife, said, this chair has to go. And so they took it out back into the woods and they, they filmed the process of the the whole burning of the chair, and um, it's ironic because um, who really would uh, buy a piece that looks like this for your living room? But it's really up my alley, and it's perfect because um, a lot of the the poetry I write um, is uh, uh, domestic situations, and this this is one of the wrecks of a domestic situation, and um, I just love this piece. Thank mm -hmm. you.